Welcome back, folks. All right, so we're doing a short little market review. Dollar index, euro dollar, and S&P and NASDAQ futures. So dollar index is our weekly chart here. You can see I mentioned this last week as a, a point of consideration for a discount. And while it looks like it touched it, it was one pipette short of touching the, the high, which is the actual low of this weekly candle here. You can find that with the week represented by the date here. Okay. So far, we're working up into this SIBI, which is a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. I'm watching how we trade in this area right here. Okay. So, um, if we watch two price points that I'm keeping a close eye on, which is the consequent encroachment of this candle's wick, which is midpoint here, and the same thing here. So midpoint of that wick. Extend those two out. I want you to do that in your own chart. Okay, and how we trade, if at all, at either one of these, that will be interesting to me. Dollar index daily chart. Okay, so you can see you can, got real close to it there, but didn't quite get to it. And then now we have pulled up into this south side of balance, buy side of efficiency. There's a small little gap. This is actually a real liquidity void where there's no actual trading printed between these two respective candles. This candle's high, net candle's low. So it'll be interesting to see if it wants to get up to reprice into this area right here, that little gap right there. If it stays open and starts to trade lower, um, this can be something that can stay open for a long time. Euro dollar weekly chart. All right, so we have the weekly volume and balance, which is the difference between this candle's closing price and this candle's opening price. While we did have this candlestick's tail and this candlestick's wick overlap one another in here, what I have drawn your attention to, and this was ahead of time, so it's not just right now. We've talked about this for also for several months, actually. But the difference between those two price points is that there is no body no candlestick body on this time frame. So the weekly candlestick, while we did trade down with the candlesticks wick and the candlesticks tail up here, whenever a market shows an unwillingness to drop a body between two respective candlesticks, that is a volume imbalance. Okay, so I dubbed that as a volume imbalance because that time frame to be efficiently delivered. Okay, so the algorithm will refer back to weekly time frame. There's an inefficiency here. Everyone else would not see this as an inefficiency because they see that it traded back and forth in here. That's not efficient. So the draw on liquidity that we've been looking for for months has finally been delivered. Okay, so the high of the week we opened traded up just to the high of that inefficiency, which is the weekly volume imbalance. And then we traded down near the close of this volume imbalance on the low end. So we had the high end of it and the low end of it. And the close was just about right at the low of it. So we traded up, met the high of it, and then closed back down. On the daily chart on the euro dollar, you can see how we did, in fact, deliver here. And painted right back down over top of that range from the low of the weekly volume of balance up to the high, and then back down again. We had several targets from July 9th analysis video. You can find that on YouTube. And you can see this is where it began before this candlestick started trading. We were looking for a move back down into the weekly inversion gap and then draw to buy side, which it did here. 
and then draw up into the weekly volume and balance. So this right here completes a rather obvious illustration of what my concepts can do for you when you're looking for in terms of precision, why the price should behave a specific way. And right now, at this juncture, it's important for you to realize, because you're, you're all probably thinking, I just watched this pan out. I watched it on my own chart. I had the annotations. I had the expectation to see it deliver, and it delivered. Now, what's the next move, ICT? What's the next thing? It's really important that you understand that we don't have to pick the next move right now. In fact, it can go both directions. It can go higher to trade up into this fair value gap, or it can dig deeper into this inefficiency here. This is a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. This is a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. Either one of those can be traded to. Because of the 50-50 likelihood, then we have to do what? We have to drop down below the daily chart and be a day trader. Trade the intraday sessions. The London Open Session, the New York Open Session. All right, let's see the hourly chart here on your dollar. I traded through the buy side, came up, found some support at the low end of that weekly volume of balance, then traded all the way up to the high, then broke down, and aggressively returned to the low of the weekly volume of balance. So on the upside, you want to have this inefficiency and this inefficiency. Both of those are in terms of the premium and or discount respectively, uh, those are the two areas of interest for me. I don't want to be overzealous and say something up here or something down here because I don't have Sunday's opening price yet. Uh, right now the time is you know, a little bit after four o'clock my local time. So I'm keeping my cards close to my vest this week and I'm gonna allow Monday's trading to give me more insights about the weekly range. So it's okay for you to not know, because sometimes I don't know. I never know what it's gonna do when we open up on Sunday. Sunday's opening price is a mystery. It's absolutely unknowable, let's put it that way. So you have to submit yourself to not knowing what it is and then watching and seeing how we behave after that new week opening. E-mini S&P. On the left-hand side, weekly chart, NASDAQ, mini futures, weekly chart on the right. All right, so I mentioned that this inefficiency here would be a likely culprit to draw up into. Uh, we, we did see that last week. Uh, this was the initial one here, which we saw that trade to and then went through it off the heels of this fair value gap, which is what we've outlined also. We had an interest in that. Weekly chart on NASDAQ, I mentioned this is likely to be a upside draw as well. And we got that delivered last week as well. And off the heels of the weekly fair value gap here in the discount. So it sent price higher. And while again, I'm not trying to call the top in the marketplace, I'm not trying to pick a top. Uh, it's in an area where I think it's reasonable to see it come back down into this inefficiency here and over here respectively for the S&P down into here. Now, if we take out the down close candle on the weekly basis, if we take out that low, then I would submit to the idea that we're probably creating an in rate term high on the weekly chart for S&P. Same thing here. If we trade below the down close candle here on a closing basis. So this is important now. It has to be on a closing basis, both S&P and NASDAQ. If it were to close below this candle's low, then I would likely assume that we are creating an intermediate term high, not that it's the top, not that it can't go higher later on in the year. It just means for right now, it would change gears for me. And then I would likely look for lower time frame sell setups and focus there until I was shown that the market did in fact want to return back 
to being bullish. But right now, everything's still bullish. Nothing here indicates there's a top. Nothing indicates here that there's a top either. All right, S&P on the left-hand side, daily chart. We have a immediate rebalance, which is this candle here, and then the next down close candle. And then we opened, traded up to the previous up close candle, and then rejected that. So unless it takes out Friday's high, I'm looking for the likelihood of it drawing back down into this inefficiency here because we didn't completely close it in. See that? So it can trade down there and still be bullish longer term. It doesn't need to change anything by doing that because what we have here is a swing low and trailed stop losses have been brought right below that low. And we have a little bit of inefficiency here between this candle's high and this candle's low. So it could trade down there and still not upset anything. And essentially, that's the midpoint of that lower inefficiency on the weekly chart. So it could trade down there, wick below this, close in this entirely, even go so far as to get down to consequent approach from this wick. And then I'd like to see this area down here stay open as a breakaway cap. So all of that changes if we trade on a closing basis above Friday's high. Same thing here on NASDAQ. We have almost entirely closed in this fair value gap here, but I'd like to see it trade down into this area here, into this order block. So uh, I'm expecting and anticipating, and for my own analysis, predicting, that we would likely trade down more into this inefficiency. Now, if we gap down, create a gap opening, trade up, and then go lower, uh, then obviously that might require a little bit more movement into this order block, maybe mean threshold right in here. So it's a lot of wait and see, and it's always the case before we open up on Sunday. So I can have a lot of different scenarios that I would favor or I would like to see or my concern would be around a specific you know scenario panning out in price on Sunday's opening price going into Monday's trading but all of that is just I guess for the purpose of study because I don't trade on Sundays anymore and because we are in an area where it could go either way I have to force myself to go down into lower time frames to day trade the sessions so I will be looking for inefficiencies and or buy side or sell side liquidity for draws on liquidity and technically not have a bias intraday. 15 minute time frame on even the S&P. Okay, you can see here on Sunday and Monday of last week, we rallied up, traded back down, aggressive rally higher and traded up into that higher inefficiency on the weekly chart. Weekly volume and balance is what this says. And then we broke lower, trade back up into a balanced price range, which is because of this singular up candle, which is a buy side and balance, sell side and efficiency, and this SIBI, which is a singular candle, sell side and balance, buy side and efficiency. These two areas here makes this a balanced price range. That's why we had it rally up and aggressively slammed lower, targeting the sell side and trading into the fair value gap here right there and then back up into that same balance price range extend it to the right boom rejects it all of this consolidation here in my mind i'm thinking this is too enticing for them and even this over here is just too enticing for sell side liquidity rate so sell side liquidity here and sell side liquidity below these lows here I would favor a run into that you know, in the first part of the week. That's what I would like to see. But I am, again, reminding you that we have not yet opened for the new week yet. So Sunday's afternoon is where we're at here at the time of me making this recording. And later in the evening, a few hours from now, we will see the opening of the new week. So unless we get above this high here, I think it warrants a, a probe of lower sell side liquidity pools. NASDAQ E-mini futures, 15 minute time frame. Uh, this one here, 
I like the idea of getting below this low and there's that little bit of an inefficiency. Okay, so um, as long as we don't trade above this high here, uh, it looks heavy and I would favor a move to that sell side and closing in this inefficiency right there. It's interesting to see how we had that little tiny little fair bag at right there. It went right up into it and then slammed it lower for the sell side below here. Um, it's rather shallow and I traded this on Friday but the uh, the continuation lower is what I'm interested in and while I wouldn't be you know, technically afraid of it running above this short-term high and then collapsing. It's better that it didn't do that because we have already with the 15 minute time frame, we have a really nice market structure here. The fact that we went to a short-term premium there to get into this fair value gap and breaker. Um, so I would like to see a gap lower, try to fill a gap and reach into this area here. That's the scenario I'm looking for for NASDAQ. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm going to be right. Don't bet the farm on it. Don't even try to take a trade on it. Okay, just observe it and, and watch it. I won't be trading until we get to Tuesday. I want to use Monday's trading to provide me a better backdrop or foundation to what I think the weekly candlestick is going to do. Because as of right now, my mode of thought going forward for this particular trading week is intraday only, no daily bias, and that means we have to trade intraday volatility. That means buy side or sell side liquidity and or trading for inefficiencies. And that's it. So uh, I know that's probably not what you want to hear because you just watched me deliver a really wonderful month of July in terms of uh, you know, a big run for a swing trader model on a daily chart. Um, but they don't set up every day. They don't set up every week. And you have to sit on your hands. And that's what we're counseling you to do here today is to sit still, relax, and let the next setup come to you and don't force it. Again, as a reminder, this was just a, a review and I'm just counseling you. I'm going very, very slow with this new week of trading and allowing Monday to give me the bias for the week. Until I talk to you next time, be safe.